This lesson is designed to teach us how to live by faith in God and His Word. We must walk by faith if we are to be pleasing to God and if we are to see His works released through our lives. You know, most of us don't think twice about stepping into an elevator. You step in, the door closes behind you, you push the button, I mean, if you want to go up, you say 10th floor, and you're up all the way, you're expecting to go up all the way to the 10th floor. And most of the time, the lift is overcrowded. You have 20 people in a lift that's supposed to be taking only 15 people or something. And all those things, but we just step in. We don't think twice about, man, when was the last time they did a maintenance on this? <laughs> what if this whole thing just goes down? <laughs> I mean, we don't even, I don't think we think about these things. We just step in, push the button, you're expecting an outcome. You're expecting to be up on that particular flow. The same thing when you fly. You go sit in there and plane, put your seatbelt on. And you're not really thinking about, man, is this really going to take off today? Or, you know, I mean, you're just expecting it to happen. This morning we're going to talk about faith in God. Having faith in God. And as we learn about this foundational topic of faith, we must understand that God really wants us to live our life of faith spontaneously, just as we exercise, quote unquote, faith in everyday life. You are exercising some amount of faith when you step into that elevator, although you don't necessarily think about it. You're trusting that it's going to take you to that particular floor and many other things. So our walk of faith, God wants us to be spontaneous, naturally walking in faith, spontaneously walking in faith with God. So it's not so much as something we need to, you know, try to do mental gymnastics with. Okay, I got to believe, got to believe. Oh, don't say that, don't say this, this. No, 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 relax. If it gets down to that, then it's probably really not faith. It's more of, you know, you're trying to force yourself into doing something. But faith has to be spontaneous. You just know who God is and you move into it naturally and you're walking in faith. But in order to do that, in order to come to that place, we must learn how to walk in faith. What does it mean to have faith in God? How am I supposed to live this life of faith? How am I supposed to walk by faith? And that's what we want to cover this morning. Just cover a few things concerning faith as part of our foundations, learning about how to walk in faith naturally, spontaneously, not making it some sort of a hard exercise that we try to force ourselves into. The Bible says in Romans 1.17 that the just will live by faith. That means everything we do in life, from eating, sleeping, working, everything you do, you do it by faith. You know, it's not like, oh, only when I'm praying for the sick person or preaching or doing something like that, I have to have faith. No, you're supposed to live by faith. Everything you do in life, whatever you do in life, has to come out of our heart of faith in God. Amen? You know, having your meal, you sit down there, especially if you're at a restaurant, you better have the faith. <laughs> you don't know who cooked it, whatever. I mean, it, it's natural. You're saying, God, I'm believing that this meal is going to bless my body and uh, sickness and disease will be kept far from me. It's in you. You live by faith. And faith pleases God. God is pleased when he sees you and me moving, living by faith. Hebrews 11, 6, again, it states it in the negative. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
But we understand, if you just put it in the positive, it means that when you are moving in faith, you're pleasing God. God's pleased. He's happy. He's excited to see you moving out in faith. Whatever you're doing, he's happy. See? I like that. I like what that person's doing. He or she is doing that son or daughter of mine. I like it. They're moving out in faith. Faith pleases the heart of God. The Amplified in uh, Hebrews 11.1 1, in, in defining for us what faith is. And I'll read it to you from the Amplified. Hebrews 11.1. 1, it says, Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for. Being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith is the assurance. It's the title deed, meaning it's a proof of ownership of things we hope for. So there are things in your life in our lives, that we are looking up ahead for, hoping for, that, that one day it will happen. One day this will come to pass. One day it will be like this. Faith is the title deed. It's the ownership, the proof of ownership of that which is yet in your future. It's still unseen. It's still not now. It's still out there. But you already, you say, I have it by faith. That inner conviction that says, it is mine. That's faith. It's the title deed of things hoped for. It's still in the future. But you say, I've got it. It is the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. That means... You may not, your five senses say it's not there. I can't, I can't see it. I can't feel it. But faith, this assurance inside you says, no, it is there. Amen? Which means you and I as believers live by, not just by our five senses, but we live by something that supersedes these five senses. We live by, if you will, the sense of faith. And many times, faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So that's sometimes people around you will not understand you because they are going by their five senses, but you are going by a sixth sense called faith. And it's inside you. It's an inner assurance. And God wants us to live that way. Which means, with all, you know, in a normal course of life, yes, I engage my five senses. God's blessed us with it. We use it. But we let this thing called faith supersede what the five senses tell us. And God says, I want you to live that way. Amen? And sometimes it's a struggle because... Everybody else around us are living by the five senses and here you are, you're trying to live by a different thing called faith. So it, it goes against the grain. It, it, it's, it's a little different from what everybody else around us live by. We're living by faith. So sometimes people around us won't understand us. Amen? But God says... That's the way I want you to live. And when you live that way, I'm happy about it. I'm pleased with that. Pleased when you walk by faith. This inner conviction that's in your heart. An area that all of us struggle with is the sovereignty of God and the exercise of faith. We all believe that God is almighty. God is sovereign. Which means he can do anything he wants to do. Nothing can restrain him. Nothing can stop him. But then why is it that I am called to have faith? Why should I have faith? Because anyway, God will do what he wants to do. Just let it be. Why faith if God is sovereign? 
anyway, he has the power, he has the ability to intervene in my life, in my circumstance, in my situation and do what he pleases. So why do I need to have faith? It's a question we all think about, ask. It's a valid question. What we find, and I'm just speaking out a couple of examples in scripture, what we find that even the Lord Jesus, who was God in flesh, anointed by the Holy Spirit, perfect, completely able to demonstrate God and the power of God in any circumstance, any situation, he was unable to do anything in places and situations where he did not find faith. Look, for example, Matthew 13, 58, it says, Now he did not do, this was in his own hometown, he did not do many mighty works there. What's the reason? Because of their unbelief. Same thing Mark reports in Mark chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. It says, um, Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about the villages teaching. It's not, it doesn't say he didn't want to. He didn't say he was not willing to. He was always willing. But he could not. Something became a stopper, a blocker to the flow of God's anointing. Now Jesus is, was the most anointed one. There was nothing stopping in his own life, the flow and the power of God. There's no sin in his life. Now, sometimes if, if a preacher doesn't, nothing happens to the preacher, preachers, we can blame him. Of course, maybe there's some sin in his life. You know, that's not. But not in the case of Jesus. You can't do that. Perfect. Fully anointed. The anointing without measure. And yet, in his ministry, it says, he couldn't do mighty works. Not that he was not willing to. So there's not any question about his will. But it's telling us that something on our side was stopping the flow of the anointing of his power. So this helps us understand the importance of faith from our side in order to connect with God who is not only sovereign and all-powerful, but is also willing and compassionate to intervene in our lives. It's important for us to have faith, to believe God, so that we can see the works of God in our lives, in our circumstances, in our situations. Amen? Now, I am not saying that this is the only thing that stops the flow of God's power, but I'm saying this is one of the things. So don't come under condemnation immediately saying, oh no, I'm such an unbeliever. No, no. Don't condemn yourself. That's, what, that's not the point. The point is that I'm trying to show us the importance of faith. Why doesn't God just blast his way through into my life, into this world and solve all my problems? Why doesn't he just do that? After all, he still owns the world. Is that right? Yes. The cattle on a thousand hills still belong to him. Is that right? The silver and the gold is still his. Is that right? And why doesn't he just shower some gold coins into your, into your room every morning? He's well able to do that. Why doesn't he just meet all our needs? And we can all quit our jobs and do ministry. It's okay. Now listen. How many of you at some stage in your life lived in a rented home? Alright. So before you moved in there, you signed a lease agreement. Right? And you moved into that home. 
A few days later, he found that the kitchen sink was full of dishes. There was dirt on the bedroom floor, the living room, all the toys, kids' toys were all on the floor. Did he call the landlord? Hey, boss, <laughs> can you come and clean my room? Did he do that? Whose house was it? Whose house was it? The landlord's. Whom did it belong to? The landlord. But question, who's supposed to clean the house? You or the landlord? Come on, guys. <laughs> who's supposed to do the dishes? You or the landlord? Me. Because you are now responsible for what happens inside that home. All of the home still belongs to the The earth, Psalm 115, I think it's verse 13, says, The earth belongs to the Lord, the, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of the sons of men. Meaning, you and I are now occupying this place. God's put us here. It still belongs to him, but you and I are responsible for what goes on here. Amen? Yeah, he's still the landlord. He still owns everything. But who's living there? We're responsible. Amen? So in the normal course of events that happen here, we are responsible. But God still says, I will intervene in what's going on there wherever I see faith. Amen? So God's put me responsible. And if I want God to enter into my world and do his works, I must invite him. And the way I invite him is by? And if I don't, it's still not his fault. Because I'm the tenant living here. Are you with me? Amen? So, why is faith important? Because the lack of faith can stop the power of God. It can stop God moving in my life. But it is by faith that I invite God. Faith is the door that welcomes God in to my circumstances, to my situations. Amen? Amen? God has put me in charge. He's the owner. But I must open the door by faith. Say, please come, Lord. I need something to happen that is beyond my capacity to handle. Your power can take care of it. But I open the door by faith. Welcome God in. So faith is important in our lives. To see God step in and do his works. The Old Testament we see faith in the old and the new. It's not just a New Testament concept. In fact, the father of faith is a man from the Old Testament, Abraham. God says, that man is the example of faith. I want you to follow his example. What do we see about Abraham? God speaks a word to him. God says, Abraham... I'm going to make you the father of a big nation. Here's my promise. Here's my word. Which meant that Abraham had to have a child, his own child. Now, let's do a quiz. This is only for men. So ladies, don't answer. How many months does it take for a baby to be born? 10? Sorry. <laughs> Let's try it again. How many months does it take for a baby to be born? All right. The guys aren't sure. <laughs> All right. Let's say it's somewhere nine months approximately. God gave Abraham a promise. Abraham, you're going to be the father of a big nation. 
It only takes nine months to have a baby. But in Abraham's life, it took 25 years before they had their first son and their only son. So why did it take 25 years when it should have taken only nine months? I don't know. But God says, I want you to follow that man's faith. Follow his example. Now, you and I know that Abraham had his ups and downs in faith. He made some mistakes. We know that. But here's God's summary of those 25 years. In Romans chapter 4, by the Holy Spirit, Paul writes, and he summarizes Abraham's journey of faith like this. He says in verse 18, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Meaning, against any reason to hope, he still believed that, he'll, that he will see the word fulfilled, what God spoke. So God says, okay, look at this man's faith. What do you see? He had no reason to have any hope. But he still believed what I told him about his life. He still believed it. There was no earthly reason. There was no logical reason why he should believe that something would happen. But he still believed. Next, verse 19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body de already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. So here's the other thing. He, then, he did not let his faith weaken by the reality of the circumstances. Yes, he was 100 years old. And yes, Sarah was barren right from the time she was young. But that did not weaken his faith. God says, look at that example. Now, you and I, we believe in God for something, something goes opposite, contrary to it. Oh, oh, our faith is going down a bit. Another thing happens that is contrary to the things that we wanted to go. It gets a little weaker. After three years, chalega, doesn't matter. Forget it. It's okay, God. But Abraham did not let his faith weaken. Even though everything around him said, this cannot be. He looked at his own body. He said, man, that was 10 years ago. I'm 85 now. How can I have a child? Look at Sarah. She's still barren. How can, I be, how can we have children? 95. Hundreds. God says he didn't let his faith weaken. What else do we see? Verse 20. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. If it was me, Maybe the first week that I had the promise, God had spoken, I would be testifying. I heard the voice of God. God said, I'm going to have a child, this, that one. A few weeks later, maybe a year later, a uh, little weaker. But what does the Bible say about Abraham? He did not waver at the promise of God, but instead, as time progressed, he only became stronger in faith. He was strengthened in faith. How? He was giving glory to God. 
Meaning he was praising God. As time progressed, he just kept giving glory to God. He didn't let unbelief come in. God says, follow that example. Things may take some time, sometimes abnormally long. But he said, don't give up. Just keep giving glory to God, giving praise to God. And the last verse there, verse 21 says, He was fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. He came to a place where he was fully convinced that what God had promised, he'll do it. <clears throat> so 25 years later, you go to Abraham and say, Hey, Abe, so what's up? What about that promise? It's a cool dude. I'm fully convinced it's going to happen. But Abraham, 25 years has come and gone. I'm fully convinced it's going to happen. I'm stronger in my faith today than when God first spoke to me. I don't know why you guys are laughing. At I'm stronger in my faith today than when God spoke to me first. I'm fully convinced. But Abraham, 25 years. No, no, no. I'm fully convinced that what he spoke, he'll do it. God says, follow that man's walk of faith. Be like him. Amen? So you and I are called to this walk of faith where we let faith supersede our things around us. But let's just quickly learn here some things about faith, the faith in our life as, as believers. I'm just going to skip a few slides here, and we'll talk about how to exercise your faith. Faith is based on the word, so receive the word. Faith is based on what God has spoken. So faith has a very solid footing, a solid foundation. It is the word God has spoken. It could be from the written word of God. In the Bible, God quickens a verse to you and says, this is it. This is about your circumstance. Or it could be a word that God has spoken to you by his Holy Spirit. God speaks both ways. The only thing about the second one, you got to be careful that it's not your own imagination. Sometimes you can mistake your imagination for a revelation. That's dangerous. But God does speak both ways. He speaks through his written word. He speaks by his spirit. Now when you've got a word, it's that word that births faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So faith has a very sure foundation. It's the word of God. You're standing on the promise. This is God's word. He said it in his word. By his stripes I am healed. He is my provider. And concerning your home, concerning your marriage, concerning your family, concerning your situations, you have the word of God. You can stand on it like Abraham did. Second, we need to exercise our faith. We need to release our faith. One of the important ways, and not the only way, but one of the most important ways we see in Scripture to release our faith is by what we say. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you believe something in your heart, you're going to say that. This is the way it's going to be. So, you speak your faith. Jesus said, if you have faith in your heart, you say to the mountain, be removed, it'll move. Nothing will be impossible to you. So one of the ways we exercise, we release, we express our faith is by the words we speak. Now that's not the only way. Because you could also express your faith through prayer. You can also express your faith through worship. You can also express your faith through the actions you do. But the primary, the important way that Jesus taught us is you have faith in your heart, you speak. So now your speaking begins to align up with what's in your heart. And you begin to say, God, this is what I, I believe will happen. This, I know it, I know it, I know it. Your words line up. You start speaking of the future. You start, start describing the dream. You start talking about the outcome. That which you're hoping for. And it's not presumption because it's based on a word that God has spoken to you. The third thing we see 
is that you need to step out in faith. You need to act your faith. Do something in line with what you believe. If you believe God's going to bless you in business, what do you do? Go start a business. Amen? I mean, you can't sit at home and say, oh, one day God's going to bless you. Listen. Yeah, it's good to have faith, but now you're going to need to act your faith. You've got to step out and start that work. Got to do it. You heard preachers say, step out in faith. That's important. You've got to act your faith. Jesus did that to the man who was lying on bed. He said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Do something that you could not do. Demonstrate your faith. Act your faith. But we must understand that faith is not only a step, faith is also a walk. We walk by faith. So that brings us to the fourth point, which is you've got to walk your faith. You've got to go through time by faith. Taking that step is very exciting because at that moment you have heard the word, you said, God has spoken this to me, I believe it's going to happen, and you step out, you do something in faith, and that's wonderful. But listen, faith is not just a step, faith is a walk, it's a journey, it's a relationship. So you've got to walk tomorrow by faith, and the day after tomorrow, the day, day, day after tomorrow, you keep walking by faith. You've got to walk by faith. Abraham walked 25 years and he walked into his promise. He's got to walk by faith. Amen? So this morning, I just want to encourage you and I, listen, God wants all of us to live by faith. He speaks his dreams into our hearts. But he's expecting us to respond by faith. And when he sees faith in our hearts. And as we walk with him by faith. He will help us walk into the fulfillment. Of what we've been carrying in our hearts by faith. Amen? Let's stand to our feet, please, before we close. I wonder if this morning there are some of us here, but maybe we've kind of become weary, become tired of trusting God. For things maybe he spoke to us a while ago. And he's saying, God, you know, it's okay. Oh, it's okay, God. I can't. Let's just forget about it. Leave it. But this morning, I want to encourage you. If Abraham could believe God for 25 years, that's a long time. Especially when you're 75. Another 25 years. But if Abraham could believe God, then you and I can. Who against hope believed in hope that he would become according to what God had spoken. What has God spoken to you? What, has the, what is the dream God's put in your heart? What has he quickened from his word to you? What has he spoken? Would you this morning go back to God and say, God, you know, I kind of left this behind. I kind of gave up on it because it was taking too long. It's okay to tell him the fact. It's taking too long, God. I just kind of put it away. But God, I realize you just want me to walk by faith. You just want me to have faith. Believe that what you have spoken, you are able to perform. You will perform. You'll do it. So I'm coming back, God, to you. 
Abraham had his ups and downs, but God never highlighted that. He said, this was a man of faith. Follow his example. I'd like to call our worship team up. And this morning, before you leave this place, could you take a few moments, please, to just revive a word that God may have spoken to you. I don't know what it might be. Maybe concerning something he was calling you to do in life and you gave up on it. Maybe something he wanted you to become and you said, God, that would never be. I give up on it. But God has spoken. His word is sure. His promise is true. Will you have faith in your heart towards the Lord? In his word, in what he has spoken. Would you just tell him this morning, God, I'm holding on to that word. That word you've given me. I will follow the faith of Abraham. I will be like that. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning to rekindle faith in our hearts. To revive the word that has been spoken to us in times past. Whether it is out of that pages of the Bible, out of the pages of the Bible, or whether it was a prompting of the Holy Spirit in our spirits, so there's a dream birthed in us by the Spirit. That word that came from the heart of the Father, revive that this morning, God. Let us not give up on it. Let faith arise in our hearts this morning. May we have the courage to see the invisible. May we have the boldness to hold on to the title deed. Even though what we desire for still seems to be out in the future somewhere. Give us the grace, Lord, to perceive as a real fact what is not yet revealed to our senses. Help us to walk by faith. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus.
choose to put our faith in you in your word we put our trust in you 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 put my trust in you yes lord i put my trust in you put my trust in you I put my trust in you I put my trust in you I walk I walk by faith he said by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you I walk and I walk by faith by faith to live by faith I put my trust in you every step I take every step I take is a step of faith no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every prayer I make is a prayer of faith and if my god is for me tell me who can see against me and i walk by faith and he said by faith to live by faith and i put my trust in you I in you I put my trust I put my trust in you Lord oh God I put my trust in you in your word I put my trust in you your promises I put my trust in you yes oh God I put my trust in you we choose to believe oh God yes Lord we believe we believe we believe you Lord I put my trust in you yes trust in you I put my trust in you I put my trust in you I put my trust in you yes God yes God we put our trust in you God we put our trust in you master we trust in you for our every need, God. And we choose to walk by faith. We choose to walk by faith, God. Church, even as pastor was teaching us from the word, Something caught my spirit as he was talking about walking by faith. The Lord, I sense the Lord was showing to me that there are many in this house who are walking and fainting, who are running and becoming weary. The Lord just showed me from Isaiah 40, 31 that those who wait on the Lord they will gain new strength. Those who wait on the Lord. My brother, my sister, if you're walking and you're fainting, if you're running and you're becoming weary, the Lord is saying, child, my child, come you wait on me. I will not fail you. Your strength will be renewed like the eagles. You will soar. You will not become weary. Yes, the journey of life gets weary somewhat sometimes. It tries to weaken us. But yet the Lord is saying, you wait on me. You will gain new strength. You trust in me. You have faith in me.
the bible says in james chapter 1 ask by faith without doubting because he who doubts is like the surf of the sea that is tossed and driven by the wind let not that person expect to receive anything from god father in jesus name we choose to receive your word god we choose to step out in faith we choose to walk by faith if you're making the decision today could you just indicate and saying yes i choose to walk by faith from today i have been walking by sight i have been looking around in my circumstances i have been seeing the impossibilities around me but today i am choosing to take a step of faith i am choosing to walk by faith could you just indicate by putting your hand up and saying yes god in your presence in your presence i am making this commitment god i will walk by faith I will walk by faith and not by sight. I am walking by faith. I am making a decision to walk by faith. No longer by sight. No longer the things around me will dictate how I relate to my God. But the faith in God will change my circumstances. The faith in God will change what I am going through. What I am experiencing. Thank you God. Release a fresh anointing of your spirit and your power. upon your people god who are making this commitment today who are making a covenant with you as it were today saying we will walk by faith and not by sight thank you god friend if you're here in the church today and you've heard this message but you do not have a personal relationship with jesus christ you're not sure what this is all about but you're here in the house of god you heard the message from god you've been in worship but you want to make a personal decision it's it's about your relationship with god otherwise all this is meaningless if you do not have your own personal relationship with jesus christ all this what we're talking about is just meaningless to you but today you're saying i want to take a step of faith and believe in Jesus and receive him into my life the bible says god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life he loves you my friend and he has given his only son to die on the cross for your sins he took the punishment he died so that you may live if you are in the house today you want to make a decision you want to take a step of faith that will change the rest of your life my friend i invite you to do to make this your prayer pray something like this i'm just leading you in a prayer but mean it from your heart if you are really taking the step of faith say heavenly father i believe that you love me I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ into this world to die on the cross for my sins. And today I believe that Jesus died, he rose again and he is alive. And I take a step of faith to trust in him. and to walk with him the rest of the days of my life in Jesus name friend if you made that prayer here in the house today can i just ask you to put your hand up and indicate you made that prayer you said god i choose to follow you you took that step of faith anybody in the house you made that prayer can i see your hand anyone down in the balcony anybody you made that prayer if you made that prayer if there's one person where can you just put your hand up nice and clear somebody okay yes god bless you my sister I, the church god bless you sorry i couldn't i couldn't locate your hand thank you jesus thank you god we celebrate what you do in the lives of people god thank you master friend i would just request you to meet with me right after the service i'll be right here in front just come and meet with me before you leave thank you let's pray receive the benediction at this time the lord bless you and keep you 
the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord surround you with his favor the lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace in jesus name and all god's people said amen we trust that this message was a blessing to you we'd love to hear from you you can email us at contact@apcwo.org at also visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources thank you for listening and god bless you